our country has been introduced to the tragic stories of too many young black men fighting for justice, but never able to speak for themselves. But then there was Leon Ford Jr. Leon is a teenage kid on the side of a dark road about 10 o'clock at night. Five ten. Thirty-five ten. Farragut and Stanton, Hotel Whiskey Lima, eight two two five. It's like one inside infinity. Police officers say, "Give me your license, registration." He gives license, give registration, give insurance. They don't run that initially. What they initially do is run his initials, L Ford, against a recently arrested list. It's a presumption that he's guilty. They want him to be somebody he's not. In their mind, they have made this stereotype, this profile, and they said, we're going to make him the profile. Come here, Lamont Ford. This is the description of the person they're looking for. He's a black male with a white t-shirt. That's the description. And with that, everything that happens on that video is from that description. Thurbish is the one who's on the passenger side who jumps in the car. Why does he jump in the car? Violating all policy, all training? Because he say they see a bulge in Leon's pants. They think he have a weapon. It flies in the face of common sense, logic, all policy. If you really believed he had a gun, you would jump into the car? As a result of five police bullets, Leon Ford has no control of his body below his waist, no control of bowel movements, sexual organs, or motor skills. Unlike attorney Ben Crump, our job with this story is not to try the case, but to give what Sean Bell, Oscar Grant, Trayvon Martin, Kendrick Johnson, and countless other young black men did not have, a chance to tell their own story in their own words. I kind of like always was my own person. Uh, I always was into something positive like music, um, football, boxing. The next Mike Tyson. You gonna beat Mike Tyson? Okay, let me see how you gonna punch him. I love cars. I like old schools. Like uh, one of my favorites is the '69 Camaro. I have an '87 Monte Carlo SS. Uh, my uncle this year, a couple months ago, for my birthday, my uncle and uh, guys at the auto body shop they repainted it and everything, and they hooked it up. It's nice. I don't. Everybody I hung with. I think I had the most girls. <laughs> nah, for real, I think I had the most girls. Leon was a real lovable baby. He was always advanced because he had older brothers and older cousins who always came over to play with him. He was always real attentive, like he, he picked up on everything. He's the type of kid that you, want, you would want your kid to hang with. He's not into no drugs, he don't hang on no corners. The worst thing he might do is jaywalk. The only crime he committed was smile too much. I'm not sitting here talking like I got the most perfect son in the world. Everybody do wrong sometimes, but my child ain't never got in no trouble. He ain't never disappointed me, ever. You know, never, never made me mad to the point where I said, man, he's a butthole. He gonna learn. He never did that. 
He's a sponge. He sucks up all information. I remember I went to Atlanta with my mom, and we was at my sister's friend's house, and they were doing music. And uh, this guy was there, and he had told me about the guitar center. And he was showing me all types of stuff, how to uh, engineer using, was it? it was Cool Edit. It, it wasn't even Pro Tools, it was Cool Edit. And uh, when we flew back to Pittsburgh, we seen the guitar center, and I'm like, man, I want, I want, I want to do music. So my mom bought me a little mic and stuff. And uh, I start recording every day. So as I'm recording, uh, my dad ended up buying me a new computer. On the computer, there was a program, uh, Windows Movie Maker. So one night, I'm just messing around with it. And uh, we had recorded a song, and I get, I get my mom's camera. And I'm recording my cousin rap this song, and I'm like, yo, if I just put the video on this program and line the words up with the song, I can make you a music video. So I'm messing around with it all night. I can't, I can't get the words matching to the song perfectly, but I'm getting it. I'm getting closer and closer. But I'm taking different clips and I'm learning how to put them on. So I, I made a, a one little uh, music video. And from there, I started going to um, Best Buy and stuff, asking them about different HD cameras, different uh, like a, um, programs to edit with that was easier. And I, it was on from there. It's been one year since Leon's shooting, and many in the Pittsburgh community are still on fire, wanting to support him, critique what the officers did that night, and hold the police department accountable for what they have not done since the shooting. Justice is fair deal, and it's not fair that this young man sits paralyzed while these officers are walking around. I have requested, we, the Alliance for Police Accountability, have requested for Officer Dervis to at the least be placed on desk duty because Officer Dervis is still working. He is not only still working, he is working in Zone 5. Not only did supporters from the community come out to rally, but also to speak in the chamber of city council. What matters is that we have a lack of leadership in this community and therefore the community is suffering. But what we need from the officers, we need you all to serve and protect us, not to intimidate and harass us. So when we interact with police officers, there needs to be a cultural understanding. I'm here because I was shot and paralyzed by the Pittsburgh police a year ago. And now I just want to make sure this doesn't happen to no one else. This, this year been hectic for me. It's been hard. Some days I wake up, I'm going to wake up some days. When I got shot, I had a choice to give up. But I, I refuse to give up. And uh, I'm in this chair. I, gotta, I, gotta, I feel like I, I have a point to prove. Um, my future was, was right before. I'm, I'm in this chair now. And uh, I, I, I'm not going to let my future be dim. I'm going to make sure my future is brighter, brighter than ever. I'm going to shine. I'm going to make sure everybody remembers me, no matter what. Leon attempts to define what his legacy will be. 
as parents are dealing with the daily blessings and challenges of a son who will be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. I'm like more angry, more angry now. I'm like snappy sometimes. I just, I get frustrated. I'm real fr frustrated. I believe there's a slight difference because Leon now can't physically get up and stand and go do the things he would do if he was not in the wheelchair, like as far as his son. I mean, sometimes he needs help with him. He can't just jump out of the bed, you know, walk into the kitchen and, you know, make a bottle or even the slightest thing for his gas. He needs someone to even pump his gas for him at this point. And we'd be having like conversations from four or five in the morning because he stayed, sometimes he'll stay up all night, you know, and uh, just sitting there in the dark. And uh, he'd be like, sometimes he just don't want to live. And he, he stayed that a couple of times. And then I gotta convince him that you got a lot to live for, you know, and then he just don't care. Sometimes he feel like he just wanna hurt somebody because he's hurting. And I tell him, come on, man. You know what I mean? You gotta get it together. You're losing control. Box, man. And if Leon didn't have enough to fight for, he is currently being charged with aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, and escape charges associated with that night's shooting, which if convicted could see him serve 20 years in prison. But Leon realizes he's fighting for more than just a case. He's fighting to have a life where so much that he used to do was taken away from him. My ability to play football with my son, wrestle with my son, um, box and just do the things that I used to do. That's my world right there. He's so cool and he laid back. He never cries with me. It's like he's like perfect. Cause I don't know what I would do with a little crybaby. He's just he just chills. I um I had him with me at the mall. I set him up on my lot and strap him in with the seatbelt and I roll around the mall and he just be bobbing his head. <laughs> he be having the ball on my lap. But in the end, there's only one thing Leon wants. And the only thing I feel like I could have other than walk again is for the truth to be told. <laughs>